indicates an asteroid crashed to Earth. The collision triggered the Permian extinction, which wiped out over 90% of all living things. Out of the disaster, a new world was born. The Triassic period is the heyday of the reptiles. To exploit the vacuum left by the Permian extinction, reptiles evolved into a variety of different species. Now, they come in all different shapes and sizes. Some are docile plant eaters. Others, like Coelophysis, are predators. Coelophysis may look like your average reptile, but it's not. It's unusually fast on its feet, curious, and alert. Icarosaurus is the first reptile to learn how to glide. A hungry dinosaur will try anything once. The Triassic, Jurassic, and Cretaceous eras weren't originally designated as a way of, to keep track of long extinct dinosaurs. Rather, these enormous stretches of historical time were first marked out by geologists to distinguish among various types of geologic strata, chalk, limestone, etc., laid down tens of millions of years ago. Of course, since dinosaur fossils are usually found embedded in rock, paleontologists associate dinosaurs with the era in which they lived. For example, sauropods of the late Jurassic. To put them in the proper context, you should bear in mind that the Triassic, Jurassic, and Cretaceous aren't the oldest geologic periods. First came the Precambrian, which stretched from the Earth's formation to about 542 million years ago. The development of multicellular life ushered in the Paleozoic era 542 to 250 million years ago, which embraced shorter periods like the Cambrian, Devonian, and Carboniferous. It is only then that we reach the Mesozoic era, 250 to, 60, to 265 million years ago, compromising the Triassic, Jurassic, and Cretaceous periods. Though they're technically called periods, many non-scientists use the words era or epoch interchangeably. This is a piece of petrified wood from the Triassic period over 200 million years ago. This piece is from the desert of Arizona. Petrified wood is a fossil of a woody plant preserved by permineralization through time by chemical and physical processes. In some cases, fossilized wood is readily identifiable. Generally, the species can be determined by examining thin slices of fossil of the fossil under a microscope. The microscopic structure of the fossilized wood is then compared to cellular structure of living species. Silica in the form of silicon dioxide, commonly known as quartz, is the most common replacement mineral. Often traces of other minerals give petrified wood its unique color and characteristics.
as you can see the quartz is the lighter color that fills fills in the white areas that that's quartz filler traces of other minerals give petrified wood its unique color and characteristics iron oxide will cause reds browns yellows and earth tones copper and chrome oxide create greens silicates of aluminum produce whites and manganese dioxide makes black the mineral content of petrified wood is easily identified using a mass spectrometer or x-ray diffraction technology x-ray diffraction is a technology used to identify the molecular structure of materials by bombarding them with x-rays and measuring the angle at which they were bent mass spectrometer is an instrument used to identify a substance by measuring the mass of an individual molecule certain conditions that must have existed for petrification to occur oxygen which causes oxidation of, of, or rotting of all types of materials would have to have been kept away from the dead plant material in this case the trees to prevent it from decaying before it was preserved most likely the dead plant material was deprived of oxygen by being buried by sediments settling in water covering the plants much of the fossil wood found today is a product of ancient river and floodplain environments after rapid burial the tree reacts to percolating water three things may happen the log may disintegrate and not be fossilized the log may be reduced by compression to to a coal or it may become petrified if petrification takes place the minerals from percolating water are deposited in fluid filled openings in the wood this process is called permineralization and it preserves the tissues of the wood in some situations minerals may also substitute for the woody tissues of the log this process is called replacement most petrified woods are permineralized the final condition necessary for petrification is time the mineral replacement process is very slow often petrified wood is found in large accumulations where trees evidently grew died and later petrified these assemblages of petrified wood are called petrified forests i.e. such as the petrified forest of Arizona with all fossils petrified wood is a limited resource that reveals a great deal about life in this area of millions of years ago so in closing creationists argue the earth is only six thousand to ten thousand years old is completely ludicrous and false thank you